I graduated to prison after a lifelong pursuit of trying to uh, provide for my family on, by my own means. I ended up racking up about uh, 15 years in prison time in the state and uh, 80 months of prison time in the feds for drug possession. My issue was that I fell away. I, I, I fell away and I fell hard. And in the process of this fall, I ended up uh, murdering this woman. I was a young, stupid kid, had no idea who I was, uh, no idea what life was, and uh, in that process I took another life. I was in the hole, uh, was still lost, and, and God used that. God used that to put a disciple in my life. Uh, a brother by the name of Larry, he was a lover of Christ, and he showed me, he showed me the true, the trueness of Christ. Uh, it was in that that uh, I came to go through a program called Kairos. Uh, I came to know uh, uh, many godly people that uh, showed me many things. It's funny, I, I was in the county jail for a year and a half uh, fighting my case. And while there, uh, there was a woman uh, who worked at the, at the jail and kind of took me under her wing and started ministering to me. And I was resistant to the gospel. I had uh, sought God and other uh, faiths. I had, I had picked up Zen Buddhism for a while. I had picked up uh, the Quran for a couple months. I had picked up uh, uh, New Age type philosophy type stuff and what I realized was that I was just seeking a formula to get out of my troubles uh, and I, I was really hoping that I wouldn't discover God in Christ but after dabbling with these things uh, for a while I, I had I couldn't escape the truth that it was only Christians who were coming in to visit those in prison it was only Christians who were coming in to love on us and encourage us and give us hope. Uh, I took a life, so I felt that I needed to take my own life. That, that's where I was. That's how debased my mind was. Uh, after coming out of that darkness, God told me that, he said, you fell further than most people. He said, I rescued you from the gates of hell. He said, that's where he rescued me from. So if I was at the gate of hell, that you can't fall any further. So coming out of the dark into the light and being in prison, being freed from all of the junk, being freed from all of the, the hurt and the pain and the suffering, being freed from the just releasing all of that and finally accepting the call on my life. I can't describe it. I mean, I'm not only free, I guess, I guess what, I, what I'm learning is that I'm not only free from what I've done, but I'm free from what I do. Christ has a way of cleansing me, and I can walk with confidence. It's liberating to be able to, to know that uh, He can use me now, that I don't have to wait until I become perfect, I guess, so to speak. So I, there's still hope in this world for me to maybe accomplish something positive. Hope is a joyful expectation of what's to come. That's what hope is. It doesn't mean I wish that I'll get a parole. It doesn't mean I wish that I'll get married again or I wish that, it, it, hope is not a wish. Hope is a joyful expectation of what to come, what's to come. And the thing that's, that, that I'm joyfully anticipating is the coming of Christ. Uh, at the heart of my faith, I, I tend to hang on Romans 5.8 that says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, I don't know if it's a promise so much as it is uh, an understanding that I have that uh, that he loved me when I was his enemy. When I was sleeping with the enemy, Christ died for me. And, and that assures me of his love, that assures me of his plans for me, he, that assures me that he will not lead me astray. In Romans chapter 3, you know, it says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, he came. And Paul said he came for us sinners. 
And that's the promise that, that I hold dear to my heart because I know I'm a sinner. I've been a sinner my whole life. And it took me to the age of 30 to realize I was. But once I realized I was, it was easier to deal with. Disciples, disciple, disciples who disciple. Jesus said, uh, go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Uh, he didn't say go out and just uh, read about me. And, uh, it, it's part of the package, I guess. It's a package deal. Jesus says, if you're gonna be a Christian, you're gonna make disciples. I could be, at this moment, uh, discipling you. You never know who you're discipling. God has given us his spirit. That spirit in us is what does the work. We're all being discipled. Paul went to the desert for three years or so to be discipled by Jesus. I don't believe that you will ever stop being discipled. The Holy Spirit is gonna teach you something for the rest of your life. In these discipleship relationships, uh, one thing I've noticed is they don't realize how extraordinary scripture is uh, one brother that I discipled he didn't realize he read the Bible like like everybody in it was pious like everybody was completely godly at all times and when I showed him that the guys in this are just like us Paul was a, 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 a horrible dude Paul was he beat dudes up he had dudes beat up he did all of this stuff. And it was like, it was like he seen a light bulb go off on the top of his head. He was like, wow, really? And he came back that next week so excited to share what he's seen in the Word. And that's what discipling's all about. You are being a disciple one way or another. People are looking at you, they're observing you. And if they see you in a hypocritical role, then they're gonna follow you. If they see you walking in the light as he is in the light, they're gonna follow you. So you are making disciples one way or another. There's two masters. There's one that we, that we should serve, and then there's another one that we've served most of our lives. So there, it's, it's, it's cut and dry. The word tells us that uh, to whom much is given, much is expected. Uh, and I know the forgiveness that's been given to me. And I know that with that, much more is expected of me. For me, the freedom Christ has given me is uh, it's invaluable. There's, there's nothing anyone could ever give me to replace that. It's something that's given me worth. It's something that's given me a purpose. It's something that's... Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it's like a person getting a brand new heart and knowing that they have a responsibility to take care of this heart now. And that's what, that's what it is for me. I know I have a responsibility to take care of it.
1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful.